Gradle Books uh, came about in 2001. Uh, it was initially a dream uh, that was shared by myself and my partner at the time, Mika Odette. Uh, we both went to um, a Brotherhood of St Lawrence in Brunswick and saw a skip-in filled with books that were going to landfill. This is a massive skip-in, like 40 foot. And we both thought it was the saddest thing we'd ever seen. Um, that night I had a dream when I was asleep of all of these books flying out of my head and forming a wall. I woke up and spoke to Mika and I said, look, that's, this is a fantastic image. We've got to do something about these books. We have to go get them. And so we did. We went and got as many of those books as we could and then went on this mission around Melbourne to collect as many books that were going to be thrown away as possible. During that time, we started to develop the concept of what we might actually do with these books. Looking at these books as things which used to be very meaningful and were now nothing but objects, dead objects. And looking at the notion that symbolically a book only has meaning when the reader opens it when the writer writes it the reader opens it then it has meaning otherwise it's just it's stuff of the world so we looked at that and thought okay they make fantastic bricks and this notion was something which we went ahead and worked with there was another inspiration that came into that as well i was speaking to Mega about it and she was like have you read george louis borges's wall in the books which is a non-fictional account of the great warrior chi shuang who supposedly built the Great Wall of China. And with every brick that was laid down during the process of him building it, a book was burnt. The idea of him doing that was to destroy history and start it from himself with that wall as the break. And so we decided that that was crazy and to flip that concept around on its head and actually build a wall out of books, which would be about the building blocks of humanity being about creativity ideas and imagination and sharing. Cutting into that was another Borges story actually. Uh, this Borges story is called Coleridge's Flower and I suppose this is the sort of metaphysical underpinning of this work for myself. In Coleridge's Flower Borges writes about the great poem Kubla Khan which Coleridge wrote and never finished. He never finished it because it was a dream. He woke up, he started writing it out someone walked in his room and then stopped his flow of consciousness. Kubla Khan himself dreamt up the wall that would surround his garden empire. That was never complete. He was killed before the wall was ever finished. So Borges sets up this crazy premise or challenge. He says, one day somebody will complete the great wall poem of humanity. And so we're like, okay, well, why don't we do it? You know, let's make this wall out of books and invite people to continue to build it through their own imagination and their own engagement with the object and themselves in the public environment. That was the initial. That was 2001 through to around 2003. We explored all these different ideas, concepts and design. It took so long for us to actually get any seed funding on it. 2004 we got our first seed funding. By that stage, the project had changed quite significantly and had become three things. It had become the large-scale sculpture, which we always wanted it to be, an interactive sculpture. Um, but it had also become a community development project. And that was necessary in order for us to get support on it originally. And then that actually became a very important reason for us to continue to do the work.